Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Philadelphia Catholic League basketball on Bob Long Sports. It's one of our favorite nights in Catholic League basketball, and that's any time we can get a standalone game, and that's what we have here tonight. Welcome inside the broadcast booth. My name's Bob Long. Alongside me, Will Ryan, Bruce Badgley, and Brady Joyce is along on the camera. Well, it's a matchup of two reigning state champs. Guarantee it's the only game in town or across the state of Pennsylvania where that's the case tonight. Roman Catholic, the 6A champs, against Devon Prep, the 3A champs. Roman Catholic unblemished in Philadelphia Catholic League play. For Devon Prep, it's been a little bit of a different story. Three and four in the league, still in a playoff spot at this point, but it's murderer's row every time you take the floor in Philadelphia, particularly the PCL. Devon Prep has found that out the right way, and, and, and now they have an opportunity here to really hoist themselves with a signature win into that top six, potentially even getting into a hosting capability in round one of the playoffs. Yeah, there's no doubt. And with how competitive the Catholic League is this year, you really have the top two. It's Newman Goretti and Roman Catholic. There's no doubt about that. But once you get past that, anyone can beat anyone. And if Devin Prep can string a couple of wins together, it's not out of the picture that they get a home game. With that being said, if they don't win a couple games, they could find themselves in that play-in game situation. Bruce, when you think about Devon Prep, you saw them just a couple of weeks ago. They had a 13-point lead against Archbishop Wood on the road, did not score in the fourth quarter, and lost that game. That's a big part of the reason why they're in the spot they are now. Archbishop Wood, they have a one-game lead with, of course, that head-to-head -head in, in play. So every one of these games is important. Here's the opportunity, though. Beat the unbeaten team. No one else has been able to do it and catapult the rest of your season or drop to three and five and find yourself in that spot that Will talked about. Yeah, it's definitely a fork in the road for Devin Prep, as he talked about. You know, they're either going to have to fight their way up or they're going to set themselves up for a good seed in the postseason. So, so much riding on this game for Devin Prep. And, you know, we talked to Coach Haas for Roman Catholic before the game is, you know, this is in the middle of a long stretch, okay, of the league season. And I asked him about, you know, how do you pace your team for the fact that you're actually going to, or expectation is, to play deep into March. And, you know, there really isn't any magic pill, okay? There's a lot of, uh, you know, gut check that they do at practice, but also there's a lot of times where they kind of scale it back a little bit because you really can't put the pedal down to the floor for an entire basketball season here yep. in high school anymore. Yeah, exactly right. Brian Haas, the AD at Archbishop or at uh, Roman Catholic, beg your pardon, came from Archbishop Wood just several years ago. But Chris McNesby, the head coach of Roman Catholic, shared a lot of those same sentiments, that this is a slog, and this is something where, you know, hey, we take a day off here and there because not only are we playing a 15-game regular season and the preseason before that, then they want to play six, seven, eight, nine games beyond that point. You know, nobody's gotten Roman Catholic. They have to go to Newman Goretti. We were talking about that off air. But, you know, anytime you play a state champ, you know it's a big game. It has that big game feel here at Jefferson University where Roman Catholic is playing some of its games. But, Will, there are so many impressive guys. Ant Finkley and Xavier Brown both going to St. Joe's next year. But the one that really pops is Sharif Jackson, the sophomore. Absolutely, and so valuable that he got those uh, very important minutes. He got seven starts last year alongside guys like Daniel Skillings, who's averaging five points a game as a freshman at Cincinnati. Guys like Khalil Farmer, who's at Hofstra currently. Xavier Brown, multiple time uh, All-Catholic selection. His sophomore year, he was second team All-Catholic. Last year, first team All-Catholic. Gonna be first team All-Catholic again, barring anything crazy. So Sharif Jackson has played alongside really good players. He's learned from the best. His pops, uh, a Roman Catholic legend uh, in him of itself, uh, and an NBA legend. You see him on NBC Sports Philadelphia all the time. You'll see him in the front row tonight. But Sharif Jackson, he's got that feel of the game that not every sophomore has. You know, he, he can go left. He can go right. He doesn't panic in double teams. He's a good passer out of the post. Really excited to see Sharif Jackson today. And then Bruce, Xavier Brown, just that guard who can put it in park in neutral when he needs to and slow the game down to his pace. When a team that can run and gun like Roman Catholic, to have that guard to pull it all back, it's so important. Well, so important 
but also I think even for Devin Prep. I mean, yeah. this is a team that's kind of finding themselves. I mean, you know, a team with that starts a junior and two sophomores. I mean, they're developing, you know, their skills as we go along. So I'm really anxious to see how, from game to game, how Devin Prep is developing for their postseason run. Should be a great game here this evening, and we're playing it at Herb McGee Court here on Jefferson University's campus, the old Philadelphia Textiles, Philadelphia University. Over 1,100 wins, Will, and a true legend. Yeah, absolutely. I hope both teams knock down their free throws in honor of the great Coach McGee. Uh, but no, absolutely, what a venue. Gallagher Athletic Complex, Herb McGee Court. As you can see behind us a little bit, it's just an absolutely beautiful venue, a gigantic venue as well. During you know this summer, I was telling Bruce that Philly Live was here, and you had three courts going on at once in this uh, complex. So just a beautiful gym, uh, obviously honoring a great coach, and it's going to be an exciting one today. We'll take a break. We'll come back. Tip-off is next right here on Bob Long Sports. Dunphy Ford is Mayfair's neighborhood Ford store. Nobody knows your neighborhood like Dunphy Ford. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation, our neighbors continue to be our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. Dumpy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dumpy difference. You'll be glad you did. My name is Patrick Donahue, a franchise consultant with FranChoice, the premier network of franchise consultants in America. FranChoice is a company that helps people find a franchise business that's the perfect fit for them. We work with the people who want to own a business but don't really know how to find one that's both a top-notch opportunity and a great match. We specialize in franchise opportunities with the following three characteristics. Low investment, high margin, and rapid break-evens. The best thing about our service is that it's free to the public. We're paid by franchise companies for this service. The process is simple. First we do an introduction, then the candidate provides me with information. We have a consultation based on that information and we build what's called the model. Once we have that model, we'll share that with three great opportunities that match your criteria. I will follow up with you through the entire process. Obviously the best opportunities fit the criteria mentioned above and the right way to find those opportunities is to spend some time with the people who work with the very best franchise companies looking to expand in your local area. I'm humbled by your consideration and I look forward to speaking with you soon. They said it couldn't be done, but somehow CCM was able to close this home in just 21 days. Carl, how'd you pull this off? Oh, hard work, dedication, grinding. Were you ever worried? Well, you know, Chloe, they pinned us in deep in the second bedroom, uh, inspection issues, but we regrouped. Knew there was still a lot in play. Well, I'm sure the Franklins were pleasantly surprised. We got a good organization here. A lot to look forward to. Good luck with the next close. And there you have it. Cross Country Mortgage is dedicated to getting it done. So, it's time for your business to renew your lease, or perhaps you're right-sizing or relocating. This can be an exciting time, hmm. but it's also a major project to undertake. Hundreds of decisions to make, hmm. some of which may impact your business for the next decade. You know you need an expert on your side from start to finish. What if this expert had no conflicts of interest? no landlords to answer to, and a fiduciary responsibility to work solely in your best interest. Someone who knows the questions to ask, the levers to pull, the pitfalls to avoid. Enter the experts at Gola Corporate Real Estate. They've seen it all over the course of thousands of years in dozens of industries. Gola gets it. And what if those experts came with a team? Subject matter experts to manage everything that comes with this process. Space planning and design, relocation planning and budgeting, helping you manage your vendors, construction oversight, all with We're back here at Jefferson University, site of the Philadelphia Catholic League standalone game here on a Thursday night. Roman Catholic against Devin Prep, the 6A champs from last year, the Kaolites, against the 3A champs from last year, the Tide. Bob Long, Will Ryan, Bruce Badgley alongside 
And if you didn't catch our open, Roman Catholic unbeaten in the Philadelphia Catholic League at this point. The only team distinguished with that honor, unbeaten in Catholic League play. Devin Prep fall all the way back to 10, 10th in the league at this point. They are in a tie for that spot, and uh, they need to continue to win, Will, for an opportunity to, to get to the playoffs this year and look to defend that title again. Yeah, absolutely. We were looking over the, the standings right before we came on air, and Roman Catholic obviously number one at 7-0, and oh, but Devin Prep in that 10th spot, and Father Judge does hold the tiebreaker over them after Father Judge took down Devin Prep in the Northeast. Uh, both teams sit at three and four. Devin Prep owns the tiebreaker over the number 11 LaSalle right now. Number 12 is Bonner Prendergrass. They're just one and six, but again, they've gone through the gauntlet. Devin Prep has not faced Bonner. So this you know, this game is probably looked as like, you know, obviously you're playing the number one team in the league, so you're not expecting you know a, a must win. But if there ever was one, this might be a must win for Devin if they want to get out of that hole that is a road playing game. Starters here tonight, Lucas Orchard, Shane Doyle, Jason Holloway, Ty Mishak, and Zane Conlin for Devin Prep. For Roman Catholic, it's Sharif Jackson who just won that tip. Xavier Brown who will bring it up the floor. Jeremy Shirt Stewart Herring the guard. Anthony Finkley headed to St. Joe's next year. And Eric Oliver Bush. That is Oliver Bush, and he's fouled on the first offensive possession of the game. Yeah, Eric Oliver Bush, Bush, excuse me, he's a senior guard transfer from Trenton Catholic. Uh, his best game this year was uh, in a game down in D.C. They played, Dor excuse me, South Car they played it against uh, Dorman in South Carolina. He had 13 points and seven rebounds. You'll see him be very active on the glass, over five rebounds per game. Missed the first foul shot. And the second, but there's Jackson. Amidst a double team, couldn't finish, and he commits the foul over the back. And that's what I felt was going to be the key to the game, is how was Devin Prep going to match up on the inside to you know, eliminate any second chances? And you even look at a guy like Anthony Finkley, who has a major advantage in the post as well. The, the wing, but he can play guard, he can play forward, he kind of does it all for this Roman Catholic team. So outside of Sharif Jackson, you gotta worry about Finkley as well. Doyle and now Conlon gets a touch. Roman Catholic picks up man to man. This is Orchard at the top of the key. And already we see Devin Prep in more of a five out set, bringing Jackson away from the rim. Extra pass to the corner. That's Zane Conlon for three. I'll tell you what, he's tough inside, but boy, he sure has a nice outside touch. And everybody, you can say that about everybody on this Devon Prep team. We've had the pleasure to do a few games in the last few weeks. There's Conlon getting a steal. They compete offensively, defensively, and all five guys can really play any position on the floor. Ty Mishak. And now Jason Holloway came back just about a week ago. So huge for this Devon Prep team. A guy can, who can really, again, just like everyone else, do it all, leads the team in scoring, gets to a good spot, and couldn't hit. He's a little slow to get up, and he limps down the floor. No limping for Xavier Brown, who takes it all the way. Yeah, just something that Devin Prep, they've just got to try and stop that ball well outside the key. So, Bob, we've seen Bud Clark play this year. What did Xavier Brown do against Bud Clark? Only 24 points, seven steals, and five assists. This kid can play. Good finish there by Lucas Orchard, and it's two-man basketball. Zane Conlon took the big man Sharif Jackson away from the hoop. That's a storyline here. Jackson not used to guarding that far from the lane. Can Devin Prep create the driving lanes from that? They lead 5-2, 5.39 to go first quarter. Mishak, that's a deep three. No good. Orchard had two hands on it, pulled away though. That's Stuart Herring, and now Oliver Bush pulls this one back. Another job by Zane Conlon defensively. Two on two. Mishak, that's a great look for Jason Holloway. Extra pass for Doyle. And another offensive rebound. Love the patience there. They're getting good looks, 
They're being patient in like going after more good looks and great offensive boards so far. Orchard. And there's an offensive foul called against Zane Conlon. Was not set in the act of the pick. Now, absolutely a point of emphasis across all levels on that dribble handoff. You can't kind of brush, um, brush the defender whom you're handing the ball off uh, against. Nice call by the officials there as Conlon made a turn and uh, hit him with his backside. 4.45 to go first quarter. It's 5-2, Devin Prep. Dribble drive, pull up, and everything but the finish that time from Stuart Herring. Yeah, that was a really good looking shot by Stuart Herring. Both teams cold, a lot of good looks, not a lot of makes. And, and now we've seen, I wanna say, three turnovers between the two teams trying to insert the ball into the post. Certainly a point of emphasis for both teams just struggling to capitalize. Roman Catholic into the offensive set. Finkley, dribble drive. Oh, that's great footwork, but just left it short. And while the footwork was great, perhaps with that big body, right, you don't need him falling away if you're Chris McNesby. Yeah, there's no doubt. He's got great touch, but he also has three inches on Jason Holloway. Keep going to the rim, and you might get rewarded with a foul call as well. Ty Mishak is guarded by Stuart Herring at the top of the key. The high school three-point line very, very faintly drawn on this Jefferson University court. You'd understand why. They primarily play college basketball here. But interesting what the new normal will be in terms of penetration and oh. the offense. Big block. Eric Oliver Bush. Good feed. And Zane Conlon, what a great job he did there. Thought like he was going to step in to take the charge. Oliver Bush expected the contact, or beg your pardon, Stuart Herring did. Contact did not come. But that block down on the uh, Devon in there, just an example of that, boy, that inside presence that Roman is just going to have all night long that Devon really has to figure out a way to contend with. Chess match here early on. Not a lot of scoring. Some pretty good looks. Here's Jason Holloway. Bully ball inside. Oh. Couldn't finish, but he got himself two offensive rebounds and two points for his troubles. So Bob with, um, ex uh, with Jackson out of the game. Count it, and one. That was Robert Cottrell. As I was saying, with Sharif Jackson out of the game, Anthony Finkley moves to go guard uh, Zane Conlin. That gives Jason Holloway the advantage physically and is able to get on the glass there. Yeah, Bob Cottrell, the junior guard at 5'11". He's known more for shooting threes. He's about a 40% three-point shooter this year. Holloway, strong rebound inside. Muscles out, Stuart Herring. Here's Lucas Orchard and now Mishak. Mishak pulls up and Boy. hits. Almost using Zane Conlon as a decoy out there at the high post. Yeah, simple high ball screen, right, Bruce? And a timeout here called by Chris McNesby. Really nice job, Conlon and Mishak. Nails it from deep. I like the way Devin Prep has really been, you know, mixing up their offensive patterns. They haven't, they've been uh, uh, unique each time they've come down the floor at how they were running their offense. And so the Roman Catholic defense really hasn't been able to kind of set up and get in any kind of rhythm. And defensively, Devin Prep set the tone by not allowing easy entries to Anthony Finkley, or excuse me, to Sharif Jackson. Anthony Finkley trying to make those entries. Jackson comes out of the game. Jason Holloway's now going to have a physical advantage over whoever's guarding him. It's just really good game planning by Jason Fisher and his entire staff over there at Devon Prep. Uh, I, I just marvel at the uh, sophistication uh, of the high school game now and the coaches being able to manipulate it the way that they do. It's just great. 
both teams, reigning state champs, lost a lot. Roman Catholic, Daniel Skillings, Khalil Farmer of most note. For Devin Prep, lost Alan Seaslack as well as IV Pettit to graduation. But the teams have reloaded, figured out their new identity and are playing great basketball. Good finish there. Eric Oliver Bush. And that feels like the sweet spot of high school basketball. More often than not, if you can get to the elbow and shoot it in rhythm, Bruce, hey, you're going you're gonna to have a high percentage from there. Yeah, and Devin Prep having to collapse down inside is going to leave, I think, those mid-range jumpers open all night long. Orchard with the handoff for Jason Holloway. Loves to go left. Oliver Bush, I think, realized that. 1.20 to go, first quarter. Do you release the basketball? I don't know. Oh, I think so. Minute 12 to go. But I think he can be deliberate. This might be a good matchup out here. Now they send a second to Mishak. He blows by. Extra pass. Holloway thought about a college three. Mishak for three. And that one's short, but he got his own rebound. And now Devin Prep, they can certainly take the air out of it if they want. 35 seconds to go. You see, they're just spreading the floor here. Well, and Roman Catholic doesn't want to let them do it. Xavier Brown picks up his first personal foul. Team second. 24 seconds left, and this effectively right, resets the internal shot clock, if you will. Oh, smart move there. Not to do the violation over and back. Now will Roman commit a second defender? Back cut. Orchard. Scarpula. That pass nearly brought rain. Tough shot. That oh. one's good for Doyle. Now down to one second. A steal. The oh. Almost. Tyler Scarpula. And that's how the first quarter ends. You know, I, I'm always a fan of underdogs taking a little bit of air out of the ball, especially at the end of a quarter. The worst thing that's going to have happen is that you're going to have momentum going into the second quarter by having the lead if they can hold the ball. So that was a three from Doyle. Again, on that blue line, but remember we're playing the very faint high school line that just kisses, comes to a point of tangency at the top of the key. Yeah, wow. I don't know what, what color is that, khaki? <laughs> <laughs> Dole. <laughs> I don't know, but Interested to see, you know, we've got a quarter underneath us now for both of these coaches. I think the chess match is really going to start this second quarter on, you know, how these coaches are going to react and structure their team based on, you know, what their opponent is throwing at them. That is for sure. You have two, two teams that, and I think we mentioned this at the top of the telecast, but the record is not indicative of how well Devin Prep has played. Again, took a state runner-up. <laughs> Archbishop Wood to the brink and then some had a 13-point lead. Ended up not winning that game in really incredible fashion without scoring in the fourth quarter. But they, they just play so disciplined. Their defense, Will, I think is really what sets them apart. A commitment to the half court on every possession. Absolutely. They're going to take charges. They're going to get to the, the proverbial wall in the middle of the paint. They're never going to turn their heads off of, uh, you know, passes. They're always going to jump to the ball. Just really, really great defensive principles from this Devon Prep team. Just look at the spacing on that Devon Prep offense. Yeah, and they don't have a five in the game. Right now, uh, Sharif Jackson is in, but he's guarding Shane Doyle, who's certainly not a five. Though he does wear number five. <laughs> so they're trying to do the mismatch. On the offensive end, Lucas Orchard couldn't hit it, and a foul will go the other way. Jason Holloway picks it up. 
This is a great look here. You can't argue with that. Steps into the open three. Maybe a little bit of a shove. A little soft inside. But neither team in foul trouble to this point, 30 seconds into the second quarter. Except I do believe Zane Conlon has two for Devin Prep. And so he sits. Ben Costello on the floor in his place. And a travel. Cottrell turns it back over. And see, when I, I talk about this all the time, but when these teams play deliberately on offense, it has such a psychological influence on you know, the team playing defense all that long, and then they actually rush their offense because they think they have to score so quickly because they don't have the ball as much. Exactly, and you're not really worried about that with like an Xavier Brown with the ball in his hands, but a Bob Cottrell comes off the bench, wants to get his. That's where it's, a, you know, maybe a bit more of an issue. Costello with the handoff for Jason Holloway. He gets to the basket. Good right-handed finish. Absolutely. The south pole going back to his right. Tremendous job getting to the other side of the hoop and finishing over the Roman defender. And getting a half step on the defender as well, Will, and just kind of keeping him on that left hip. Finkley wants to get the ball into Jackson. Devin Prep trying to double team. And a double foul is called. Wow. Costello and Jackson. Boy, advantage Devin Prep there. Well, there was a lot of bumping going on there for quite a while. I was watching that matchup, and there's no give on either player there. And that's Jackson's second. Wow, Costello's first. Again, a reserve, sixth or seventh off the bench. And Jackson, the star, his second personal foul. Here's Finkley. Oh. Does a little chin up on the rim as well. Got off just in time before they could have blown the technical foul <laughs> whistle, but explosive take to the rim for the big fella. Now a double team, Mishak gets through it so well. Doyle, good look to Costello, strong catch without traveling. Much to the disagreement of the Roman Catholic bench. Mishak creates the space to prohibit that five second call. <laughs> I just love the conversation Coach McDesby's having for, with uh, the official over there. Devin Prep again with some cadence here. They get it to the one-on-one -on -one matchup. Holloway, as the double team comes to him, he'll get rid of it. Dangerous place to play with the basketball. Great look though, Mishak. Off the front rim. That's good offense though for Devin Prep. You take 40, 45 seconds off the clock and you end up with a rhythm three. Yeah, and something that you'll notice about this Devin Prep team, one through five, they're comfortable in the post. A lot of times, you know, if you're not a big man and you catch down in that position that Doyle was in, you know, you're thinking about a double team, you're thinking about where your teammates are. Doyle, very comfortable with the ball there, able to kick out for an open Mishok three, which Devin Prep will take all day long. Cottrell to the basket. That's a tough one, oh. but gets it to go. Mishok, that's a great move. Hit from behind wasn't called. And a, a, a near interception, second time Holloway has had trouble with the footing. Look at how they just regain their composure in the middle of all the chaos and start their offense all over again. Great patience. Orchard. And Doyle nearly traveled with it. And that one is knocked off the foot of Finkley. It'll stay here, 4.34 to go, second quarter. Mishak keeps that footing, even as he was bumped on the way there. And a timeout called by Jason Fisher, 426 on the clock. Fisher started to sense a lot of dribbling, not a whole lot of those you know, typical backdoor cuts for Devin Prep, and takes a timeout. Great use of the timeout there, uh, with 426 remaining here in this first half, a low scoring first half, as Devin Prep leads just 15 to 10. 
Yeah, you know, quite honestly, you, you talk, touched on it there about the dribbling, and uh, like to see a bit, you know, maybe a bit more passing to quickly get around that perimeter. Right now, there's there's a lot of dribble penetration and looking for the open guy. I like to see the ball not hit the floor across the perimeter and it gets some quick movement back and forth there, especially against that trap. Yeah, and I think what Devin Prep's identity is, is if they're going five out, they're going to have, you know, Ty Mishok up top, two wings on each side, and the first wing's always going to cut back door, and the second wing has an option to come and get it or cut back door. There you saw Mishok kind of just dribbling without that movement to either wing. Fisher calls a timeout and maybe can get a, uh, a mm -hmm. quick hitter here off this inbounds play. Yeah, let's see what, see what happens. Costello, and now Orchard driving left. Little pick the picker action there. Lucas Orchard inbounds, sets a back screen for Doyle, and then they set the screen for Orchard. Roman scouted it well. Good old screen the screener. Oh, yeah. Mishak now, double team comes on him. Stutter step got him by Finkley. That one's last touched. It looked like it might have gone off the foot. But again... They had a much better angle than we did up here. Tough to tell. But now Holloway at the elbow, and it's an offensive foul. Second wow. moving screen called against Devin Prep. First against Ty Mishak. Funny enough, when you're scouting for Devin Prep, you're saying that they're going to do handoffs and brush screens, meaning on those handoffs, they're going to hit that defender. That time it was just a plain old regular screen that Ty Mishak Really wanted to get a piece of whoever was guarding Jason Holloway, and he did so in an illegal fashion. Anthony Finkley, and now Xavier Brown. Boy, good scouting there by Conlon, huh? Or uh, by Doyle, but he just goes the other way. Xavier Brown says, okay, I'll go right. Happily. Dribble drive. Ben Costello fortunate there on the pump fake. He drives to the baseline. Probably would have been better served just swinging it up top. Good steal. And they'll put it in park. Eric Oliver Bush has shown good hands defensively. Count it and one for Xavier Brown. One more look. What a crossover. Certainly still sliding with Holloway. Yep, and how do you scout for a guy like Xavier Brown other than say, try to contain, do your best to contain? We're going to throw Shane Doyle, a sophomore, but a guy who we saw him match up against Jaleel Bethea. We've seen him match up against Horace Simmons. Always, he's, He is always taking the marquee matchup of the night. That time Xavier Brown said, I'm going to take you to, the, uh, to school a little bit, young fella. Wow. Halfway down. And was that a technical foul call? Let's see. It looks like maybe just a bench warning. I see. Yep, absolutely right. Bench warning against Devin Pratt. Mishak tried to throw it off the defender and out of bounds, but instead it'll be a held ball situation, alternate possession to Roman Catholic. Wow. I thought that could have been a kick ball. Yeah, I think, I mean, there was no kicking motion there. Mishak, I think, just tried to kind of throw it at the legs to induce the call. You're not always going to see it in that situation. The beauty of playing out of college court, we've got some, yeah. some people to, to mop the floor today. Love that. My goodness. Finkley in a tough spot to defend. Spin. And finish. Exquisite footwork inside, and Roman Catholic leads. Yeah, Devin Prep has no answer for that. Yeah, that's such a tough matchup for Reese Kraft as well. Let's see if he can make it up with a corner three. Strong board inside, and Roman Catholic now pushes. Xavier Brown, boy, in a phone booth, just took that behind his back. Great look for Cottrell. It's good. This is the free-flowing Run and gun, Roman Catholic offense. And what a pass from Stuart Herring as well. Unbelievably good. Now if you're Devin Perap, it's important to get back to your pace. Yeah, I believe an 11-0 run for the Cahillites. Good look inside. Holloway. Doyle, 
Great look right back to Holloway and it's taken off his hands. Eric Oliver Bush. Here's Cottrell, he hit the last three. And a little too aggressive on that one, got himself caught underneath the basket. Mishak. Holloway for three. Off left. Oof. Almost banked it in. 140 to go. All Roman Catholic in the last three minutes. Xavier Brown. Strong box out position by Holloway. And Mishak lost the ball. He's going to get it back. Intelligent veteran basketball to pull that back. 1-10 left in this half. Roman with a four point lead. Devin Prep content to hold the ball probably for one possession here. Roman says, I don't think so. They're gonna bring two and make them swing it around a little bit. At the half, we hope to hear from Chris McNesby for about 30 to 45 seconds. Bruce Badgley down there with the wireless mic. This defensive possession will go a long way in determining Chris McNesby's mood, I would say, Will. Absolutely, there's no doubt. And a foul, and that is just the fifth team foul against Roman Catholic. If they choose, Will, they only have one more to give. Yeah, Cottrell's second, and Roman Catholic, they go six deep, right? They don't really go past uh, Bob Cottrell. Will Felder gets some minutes, Sebastian Edwards gets some minutes but taking a foul in the first half, you're not too sure about it. Could be situational as well. Absolutely, we're seeing a lot more of Reese Kraft here. Reese Kraft didn't get a whole lot of minutes against LaSalle. His best game was against Father Judge. After that Father Judge game, he was seven for eight from three on the season. Good move there by Mishak. A lot of grabbing wasn't called. And now 16 seconds left. Devin Prep will hold for the last shot. There's a nearly, well, it was open, just wasn't taken. Mishak, he'll try from the same spot. Bang! Three seconds left. Roman Catholic, a half court heave, good if it goes. And that is the end of the first half. What a game. Roman Catholic leads 19 to 18. And keep an eye for the gentleman in orange there, right around half court. And zoom in for a halftime interview. Okay, Bruce Badgley on the court, Roman Catholic head coach, Chris McNesby. Chris, boy, I tell you what, that was quite of a, a half of basketball there. You ended up, you know, coming out with a one-point margin at halftime. Your thoughts on your team performance? Yeah, we just got to hang in there. They're a really good team. They play with a lot of patience. Uh, I thought our guys fought back well, so that's going to be the key. Uh, they're going to make a run. We got to... We got to continue to keep our composure, and uh, we got to keep battling. It's going to be a good night, good game. Yeah, you talked about composure. I mean, Devin Prep, obviously, they were being pretty, um, you know, deliberate on offense. So, how do you keep your guys grounded? Uh, yeah, you got to be patient. You can't, you can't reach. You can't overplay. You got to just stay focused. Thanks a lot, man. Take care. Bruce, thank you so much. Great job with that halftime interview, and and really importantly as well, Chris McNesby, and we've seen coaches all across the league, Will open to doing this in the heart of the game. Uh, it, we don't take that lightly. We appreciate that access. It really adds to the broadcast. Stay with us, folks. It is halftime here at Jefferson University where Roman Catholic is playing its home basketball games this year, that and Holy Family. We're thrilled to be here. Thanks to Brian Haas and everyone else at Roman Catholic for making it happen. We'll be back. Second half will begin in about nine minutes. Dunphy Ford is Mayfair's neighborhood Ford store. Nobody knows your neighborhood like Dunphy Ford. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation, our neighbors continue to be our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want. With financing you need. Dunphy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dunphy difference. You'll be glad you did. My name is Patrick Donahue, a franchise consultant with Franchise, the premier network of franchise consultants in America. Franchise is a company that helps people find a franchise business that's the perfect fit for them. We work with the people who want to own a business but don't really know how to find one that's both a top-notch opportunity and a great match. 
We specialize in franchise opportunities with the following three characteristics. Low investment, high margin, and rapid break-evens. The best thing about our service is that it's free to the public. We're paid by franchise companies for this service. The process is simple. First we do an introduction, then the candidate provides me with information. We have a consultation based on that information, and we build what's called the model. Once we have that model, we will share that with three great opportunities that match your criteria. I will follow up with you through the entire process. Obviously, the best opportunities fit the criteria mentioned above. And the right way to find those opportunities is to spend some time with the people who work with the very best franchise companies looking to expand in your local area. I'm humbled by your consideration, and I look forward to speaking with you soon. They said it couldn't be done, but somehow CCM was able to close this home in just 21 days. Carl, how'd you pull this off? Oh, hard work, dedication, grinding. Were you ever worried? Well, you know, Chloe, they pinned us in deep in the second bedroom, uh, inspection issues, but we regrouped. Knew there was still a lot in play. Well, I'm sure the Franklins were pleasantly surprised. We got a good organization here. A lot to look forward to. Good luck with the next close. And there you have it. Cross Country Mortgage is dedicated to getting it done. So, it's time for your business to renew your lease. Or perhaps you're right-sizing or relocating. This can be an exciting time, hmm. but it's also a major project to undertake. Hundreds of decisions to make, hmm. some of which may impact your business for the next decade. You know you need an expert on your side from start to finish. What if this expert had no conflicts of interest, no landlords to answer to, and a fiduciary responsibility to work solely in your best interest? Someone who knows the questions to ask, the levers to pull, the pitfalls to avoid. Enter the experts at GOLA Corporate Real Estate. They've seen it all over the course of thousands of transactions in dozens of industries. GOLA gets it. And what if those experts came with a team? Subject matter experts to manage everything that comes with this process. Space planning and design. Relocation planning and budgeting. Helping you manage your vendors. Construction oversight. All with zero out-of-pocket cost to you. A turnkey experience that adds real value. Value that flows right to your bottom line. GOLA gets it. We've been partnering with clients like you for over 40 years. And we know what's important. Solving problems. Creating flexibility. Protecting and stretching your dollars. Philadelphia-based with a national presence. Get to know GOLA. GOLA gets it. At Meineke, we care about your family. So this winter, let Meineke keep your car on the road, saving time and money. Take advantage of Meineke's complete auto repair services, whether it's tires, brakes, exhaust, or tune-ups, at Meineke, we do it all. And all services are backed by Meineke's nationwide guarantee. Whatever car repairs you need, come to Meineke. Because at your locally owned and operated Meineke, we do car care right. What does this win mean? Been with the family for a long time. With our team chemistry, it was bound to happen. Just close, baby! Such a big win from Cross Country Mortgage. Dedicated to getting it done. Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report. Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report live on Bob Long Sports. Today, we're going to talk about the offensive line and our man of the hour, the chef, the man himself. This year, you're going to see all four guys run. They all bring a different style. The quarterback is going to read the defensive end's eyes and make a determination. Am I going to keep this football or am I going to hand it off to the running back? And that is generally the point of the RPO. Look who we have. We have Chris Perangeli, our guest picker for the evening. Dunphy Ford is Mayfair's neighborhood Ford store. Nobody knows your neighborhood like Dunphy Ford. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation, our neighbors continue to be our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. Dunphy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 
7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dumpy difference. You'll be glad you did. My name is Patrick Donahue, a franchise consultant with FranChoice, the premier network of franchise consultants in America. FranChoice is a company that helps people find a franchise business that's the perfect fit for them. We work with the people who want to own a business but don't really know how to find one that's both a top-notch opportunity and a great match. We specialize in franchise opportunities with the following three characteristics. Low investment, high margin, and rapid break-evens. The best thing about our service is that it's free to the public. We're paid by franchise companies for this service. The process is simple. First we do an introduction, then the candidate provides me with information. We have a consultation based on that information, and we build what's called the model. Once we have that model, we'll share that with three great opportunities that match your criteria. I will follow up with you through the entire process. Obviously, the best opportunities fit the criteria mentioned above, and the right way to find those opportunities is to spend some time with the people who work with the very best franchise companies looking to expand in your local area. I'm humbled by your consideration, and I look forward to speaking with you soon. They said it couldn't be done, but somehow CCM was able to close this home in just 21 days. Carl, how'd you pull this off? Oh, hard work, dedication, grinding. Were you ever worried? Well, you know, Chloe, they pinned us in deep in the second bedroom, uh, inspection issues, but we regrouped. Knew there was still a lot in play. Well, I'm sure the Franklins were pleasantly surprised. We got a good organization here. A lot to look forward to. Good luck with the next close. And there you have it. Cross Country Mortgage is dedicated to getting it done. Third quarter about to begin here on Bob Long Sports, and we'll welcome you back inside our broadcast booth. Bob Long, Will Ryan, and Bruce Badgley here. Bruce, we'll start with you. Your thoughts on a first half that only resulted in 37 points combined. That had everything to do with Devin Prep and, uh, you know, that deliberate style on offense. I'll tell you what, um, when they didn't sh have success, when they get a second chance at it, they'd start over. They never seemed rushed. Uh, they had, uh, you know, some trouble shooting the basketball, but that didn't seem to affect them. Everybody on that floor for Devin Prep knows that the way that they're going to win this game is through patience and shortening the game. And uh, that message came across loud and clear to me. Will, keys to the second half. Yeah, there's no doubt. To Bruce's point, a lot of times Devin Prep creates offense off of dribble drives and kickouts. Those kickouts weren't necessarily there all the time. They were content dribbling back out and getting back into their offense. They need to remain patient, but they do need to knock down open threes when available. For Roman Catholic, when they were successful was when the ball was in the hands of Xavier Brown, Anthony Finkley, and Stuart Herring. The three of them, all seniors, very experienced. They don't really get flustered by that slow pace. Uh, so keep it in the hands of those guys. Hit your shooters like a Bob Cottrell who has seven points to lead the game in scoring. And I think Roman Catholic should do just fine. Underway here in the third quarter, Devin Prep in the gray. Roman Catholic with the one point lead in the white. Holloway, he's done a lot of work with his back to the basket. So good at passing out of the post. Mishak goes baseline, took contact. Now Orchard. Doyle, nice job shielding with his back to the defender and a reset. And there you go, it's the patience of Devin Prep. This is now 35 seconds and counting on this first possession of the third quarter. Orchard, Doyle thought about a three, had two early fouls, so sat the entirety of the second quarter. Now a 50 plus second possession that is sent into the first row. Not, not a bad look. I mean, you've got to take advantage of that. You have to make the defenders come to you so the next time he's just going to pass it off to the open guy in the corner. And what we saw there from Devin Prep is a willingness to do two or three sets within a single possession after one doesn't work. And again, it's blocked out of bounds, so why not? Right back into the offensive set, into the half court. Roman Catholic a minute and five and counting without touching the basketball yet. Holloway, strong move. 
says, I see you all in up there, Sharif Jackson, but I can finish. And a good job by Jackson to go straight up. Holloway said, that's nice that you're playing legal defense. I'm still going to finish with my left hand. Xavier Brown. Good defense there by Doyle. Let's and see how patient Roman is now. That's a great look. Oh. Sharif Jackson, one power dribble over the right shoulder. And if they can get him involved, oh baby. The Cahalites would look really good in this second half if they can get it into Jackson. You saw Jackson there dribble through a double team, go to his offhand and finish. I mean, that's just not stuff that normal sophomores do. Here's Mishak, got the mismatch, and he is fouled. Great job, one-on-one -on, -one on Finkley, so Will, then they clear it out for their point guard. Absolutely, and, and Mishak has such an awareness about the court that once he gets a step on Finkley, when he's on your side, he's beat. You know, that's a saying that a lot of coaches say, if, if he's on your side, you've got him beat. So once he has him on his side, he's able to step in front of Finkley, and because Finkley's on his back, the help comes from Stuart Herring, and Stuart Herring picks up the foul. Already the coaching wheels are turning, and we're only, <laughs> you know, barely two minutes into the third quarter. By the way, correct me if I'm wrong, I think that might be the first made free throw of the day. I think Roman Catholic struggled from the line, maybe 0 for 4 in the first half, and Devin Prep now, I think, 1 for 2. And tied at 21. You mentioned that two-minute stretch here to start the third quarter, Bruce. This only the fourth possession of the half. Sharif Jackson, open three. It's good. Fantastic offense. Eric Oliver Bush finds the flush. So how's Devin Prep going to respond? Jackson's into the game now. He's involved, right? They're getting him touches. He gets two points off of a lefty hook. They bring a double and they knock down a three. Will Devin Prep leave him on an island and stay out on shooters? Or are they going to you know, strategically pick, okay, this is the guy that we're going to double off of? Great look. Maybe a shot yeah. Conlon could have shot. You know, a lot of times you're thinking extra pass, but extra pass doesn't always mean better look, especially with the speed of the Roman Catholic defenders and the length. I mean, they've got three guys out there. I mean, I would say all five guys are probably 6'3 or more. You know, the other thing there was ball, flip, ball fake, right? The defender was cheating. Oh, he's got to take that shot. Yeah, that's another one that he probably can shoot. Holloway, though, very aggressive offensively. Now a reset. It's a three-point game, 4.39 to go. But look at how they're bringing Finkley way out away from the basket. Jason Holloway pulls up, and he might have been hit. Yeah. Was not called. Xavier Brown, he's so dangerous in transition. Got it. Mm. That's the reason why uh, Devin Prep really has to have that ball control off. It's because Roman is just going to so quickly can get into, you know, good position to make those shots. And so under control as well. I mean, Xavier Brown, I feel like we've got a lot of great floor generals in the Catholic League, maybe none better than Xavier Brown. The way that he, you know, keeps the pace about the game, the way that he keeps Roman involved, the way that he can, without, you know, speeding up or getting, I shouldn't say speeding up because he changes speeds so well, but without ever getting uh, away from himself, you know, able to pull up in the mid-range there. He's just such a great get for St. Joe's University. Um, Unbelievable. Rob Wright has something to say, too, I think. Oh, no, absolutely. <laughs> and, and I can't wait for that matchup. Yeah. Last year, Xavier Brown, Rob Wright go at it in the regular season. Xavier Brown and Daniel Skillings and, and Roman Catholic gets the better of them. Uh, but then in the postseason, obviously, Newman Goretti you know, win, wins the championship. And in the building, St. Joe Hawk himself, who had 31 points last night, How about Lynn Greer. Wow. Wow. Of course, a Roman Catholic Cahillite. Legend. Famously yeah. took what? A minute 15, a minute 20 off the clock. And then distributed, I believe, for the game winning layup at the Palestra over Bonner Prendergast. And what was that, his sophomore year? Yeah, I yeah. think that's right. Unbelievable. 31 points last night and an overtime loss to George Washington, but the great Lynn Greer in the building. That yeah. one is a kick. 
kicking motion there by Eric Oliver Bush. Yeah, and not surprised here that Coach McDesby is, is going full court. He wants this game up-tempo. Well, you look at the difference in time and possession, but now it's three on one. And I think Roman will take that. Conlon, though, knocks it down. Again, I thought there was somebody open at the strong side block, three on one, and that's the look. But when he can knock it down like that, why not? Yeah, doesn't that make you wish that he took the other two as well? I mean, <laughs> wide open in the corner, he can knock it down. He's got two triples tonight. And a huge bucket in this basketball game as well. It's getting late early. Devin Prep is going to take the air out of the basketball. You gotta maximize these possessions and stay in it if you're a Tide fan. Right, it's bizarre to say with three minutes and 30 seconds left in the third quarter, but how many possessions are in this game? Excellent entry pass. Patience by Sharif Jackson. No help over the top. Devin Prep playing man-to-man -man defense at the top of the perimeter. That's a good matchup there for Orchard. I think he would have liked to have gone up with that one. He just had Cottrell on him inside. But you saw the result of Conlon hitting that three out to the side. It's opening up the lane so that they could, so Devin Prep can send some drivers to the basket. Orchard, baseline drive, and nobody was there. What a tip there by Cottrell. No foul, now the foul's called. It's a blocking call. Again, at the college level here, not that the referees are held to it, but you look at that restricted area very clearly inside. It's not a part of the rule, but it's kind of referee's discretion. That makes it a lot easier to make that call. And, and the other thing is, what did Stuart Herring do there? He didn't go into the body at all. There was contact, but that was all initiated by the Devon Prep defender. Bruce, a little miscommunication there offensively for Devon Prep. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, but you saw the fact of uh, uh, the offense that they're running there by making some of these perimeter shots, it's actually going to open up the, the passing lanes, as you saw there. Unfortunately, an errant pass, but. The largest lead for Roman Catholic, 2.52 to go third quarter. It's 30 to 24. Oh. Wow, what a play by Mishak. And now it's three on one again. They'll elect for that corner three for Conlon and brought down. That was Oliver Bush, really athletic rebound. Cottrell, this would be a big one. Holloway, man's rebound. Now Devin Prep can run. Good move. Mishak for three. Bang! Boy, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Technical that. foul is called against Ty Mishak. Jawing with Jermai Stewart Herring. This is the splash. Keep an eye, left side of your screen. Wow. Oof. Wow. Hey, we don't know what he said, but it wasn't actually intended for Stuart Herring. It was intended for Anthony Finkley, who wow. was closing out on the three. And That's who he was clapping towards, if you will. Yeah, and you don't want to speculate, but you've seen multiple times, you know, at all levels, you know, a guy knocks down a big three and, and might yell something to himself that could, you know, might, you know, contain an expletive and it might be construed. First of all, if you, you know, contain an expletive, obviously the refs have a discretion to call that a technical, but sometimes you're hyping yourself up and it ends up getting misconstrued as a technical foul, not to speculate, yeah. but it didn't really look like it was directed at anyone, maybe Finkley, but Finkley was a distance away from him. This is not speculation. That's a huge call in this basketball no, game. No, there's no doubt. They yeah. had gotten it down to one possession. The offense was flowing. Got two open threes in a row. And now Roman Catholic, five-point lead and the ball. Devin Prep into the zone. Finkley. And now Xavier Brown. Finkley. I think Devin Prep will take that. And now numbers. Mishak pulls up, college three. Almost NBA three. And Devin Prep, yep, Mishak commits the foul. So that's two quick ones in the span of about a minute of play. Yeah, but not a bad foul. I mean, the Roman Catholic had the numbers. Except that that's his third. Oh, my. Yeah, because the technical foul is also a personal foul, not a good foul by Ty Mishak there. Let someone else take it. Uh, they got to keep him in the game. I mean. Yeah, absolutely. No, I don't think that's really a thought right now, taking out your floor general. 
And that's how you beat the zone. Xavier Brown for three. Ball didn't hit the floor. Exactly right, Bob. Get the ball to the middle of that zone. Two collapse. Kick out to your knockdown three-point shooter. Holloway. Quick 5-0 run here from Roman Catholic. The two technical free throws. And then the three, Mishak. Doyle. Orchard for three. Oh. Nice rebound there by the sophomore, Doyle. Boy, they really mix it up. Every one of these guys, right? I think the roster will tell you that Doyle's playing in the backcourt. Doesn't really matter. Conlon. Now 48 seconds left. Eight points is the largest lead of the day for Roman Catholic. Doyle. That's long. Good rebound there. Pulling it right away. Oliver Bush. Xavier Brown. And that should be Roman Catholic basketball. Yeah. 30 seconds left. We had a nice angle at that. It looked like uh, maybe off of Holloway there. Yeah, I thought it was off Holloway. That's one that Xavier Brown finishes more often than not. Yeah, Devin Prep should consider themselves fortunate that that one didn't fall. But Roman Catholic will get to hold the ball now with an eight-point lead. Hold for the last shot. Thirteen seconds left. Stewart Herring. And now this is Eric Oliver Bush. Jackson with a touch. Four seconds left. Needs some help. It'll be a three at the horn. I tell you what, give credit to that Devon Prep defense. They did not overcommit. They played very patient. But still, an eight-point lead for Roman going into quarter number four. Uh, as you said, Bob, biggest lead of the night. Uh, Going to be a tall order for Devon Prep. And, uh, you know, they were actually, even though uh, Conlon did hit, you know, one of those threes in the quarter, they were a little bit cold down the stretch. Folks, it is time to play America's favorite game, and that is <laughs> Where Yet? Let us know where you're watching the game from. You can uh, tweet at us, at Bob Long Sports. You can comment on the YouTube stream. And if you haven't already, we'd humbly ask that you hit that subscribe button as well on the Bob Long Sports YouTube channel as well as our Twitter channel as well. But let us know where you're watching the game from, and we'll give you a shout-out on the air. It's my favorite game show. <laughs> Absolutely right. <laughs> So in that quarter, you know, the half ended 19 to 18. So that's a 16 to 9 quarter in favor of Roman Catholic. Yeah, they really performed admirably in the half court. Um, they did have some up tempo chances, but you could see the athleticism and their dominance inside in the half court, I think, in that quarter. Roman Catholic in the white and Devin Prep in the gray. Make sure you stay tuned post game as well. Will Ryan will head down and have a post game interview on the floor with a couple of the players from the winning team. Lucas Orchard for three. And that was a little short. And again, that's a step back from where he normally was, Will. That was a step beyond the blue, even. It came up just a tad shy. Contact there. It'll either go against Orchard or Conlon. It goes against Lucas Orchard. But that's where Devin Prep's got to get aggressive is, you know, when that ball goes into the lane, uh, they really have to put some bodies on those guys. They cannot let them just turn around and either distribute or shoot. Right, because once the ball gets into Sharif Jackson, right now it seems like it's either going to be a bucket on a post move or a kick out for an open three. Um, so pick your poison right now with the, the entry passes to Jackson. You just can't allow them. Finkley. Holloway went down a little easy. Good block oh, oh, oh. there by Lucas Orchard. 
Now numbers here. Holloway spun right into Stuart Herring. Very lucky that Devin Prep retains the, the, the ball there. And that one went into the chest of Jackson, and now they'll reset. Roman Catholic taking a page out of the Devin Prep book. And why not slow things down a bit? And they have the personnel that do it, right? You can't underestimate what having, right now, four seniors on the court does. You know, all these guys have played significant, significant minutes over the years, whether it be in the Catholic League, whether it be in New Jersey, whether it be in Delaware, all these guys, respect, respectively, um, have great experience. And that's where they have the matchup advantages in the half court. Xavier Brown gives it away. What a play by Sharif Jackson. Finkley, yes, sir. Timeout. And it's called by Chris McNesby. One more look. What a steal there by Sharif Jackson. His eyes just had to, like, open wide. There was nobody between him and the basket. <laughs> there were three Roman Catholic guys and not a single Devin Prep defender underneath that uh, foul line there. Wow. Folks checking in, Joel Peterson watching from Reamstown in Lancaster County. Out your way, Bruce. Yeah, Reamstown. LL Hoops country. There you go. Devin Dittrick, Grove City, Pennsylvania says, go Zane Conlon, roll tide. Wow. Gabriella Wheeler's watching from King of Prussia, also says roll tide. And Jason Hackman, our buddy watching and says great job with the broadcast. Well, Jason Hackman, great job to you and everything you do to promote high school athletics and showcase the student athletes that play it. We appreciate you very much. Dangerous pass. There's Roma Costello. Ca Roma Catholic keeping the pressure on. They want to keep this game up tempo. Six minutes left. Jason Holloway looking for help. That's a great job by Finkley not allowing him to get to his left hand. That's knowing your personnel. Really nice job by the senior. And staying down on the play also. Doyle, he is grabbed. Just the second team foul against Roman Catholic yeah, here I don't, in the second half. I don't think you mind that, especially after seeing how wide open Ty Mishok was. Uh, once he, Devin Prep gets into the paint, kicks out for threes, Ty Mishok was wide open for one in the corner. So good foul there by Oliver Bush. Well, if you're a Devon Prep fan, it is time to get hot. Team that's very efficient offensively. A couple of threes, and they're right back in it. Yeah. Oh, my. Doyle. Great look inside. He just couldn't finish it. Cottrell did just enough defensively. I think Doyle didn't even expect to be as open and uncontested as he was. Cottrell was getting his hands in the passing lane for the corner three, Bruce. Yeah, absolutely. He was surprised he was left alone in the lane. Double team. Timeout, Chris McNesby. That's a veteran move by a longtime head coach. We haven't really talked much about Chris McNesby. Of course, we've talked to Chris McNesby, thanks to Bruce at halftime. But longtime coach here at Roman Catholic and then took, took a break, spent some time with family, and uh, now has come back to the program after a hiatus. Matt Griffin stewarded the program very well, Will, over a couple of years. Now he's down at Florida Gulf Coast after a stint at the University of Albany, off, off to great things. Matt Griffin, but McNesby, a big-time coach. Yeah, there's no doubt. It, during the opening, I was thinking, you know, young high school players, they might know Roman Catholic for Matt Griffin. They might not, you know, have been around or have been following the Catholic League during the Chris McNesby years, but McNesby won two PCL championships, and obviously they're looking for a third this year, and the program's 33rd. Wow. Uh, the most in, the, in PCL history. They've got two, co Dennis Sendon, 10 PCL championships, Billy Markward, nine. Chris McNesby, obviously two of his own, but just an unbelievably storied program. And when you go down the line, you know, Lynn Greer is here in attendance and so many notable alum. Um, that's a product of great coaching and a great program. Chris was so very proud of the, of the program. And we were, when Bob and I were talking to a pregame, he wasn't necessarily talking about actually basketball. He was talking about everybody had like averaging like 3.5 grade point average. Yep. You know, so, I mean, that's Chris McNesby. Good luck inside. 
Lucas Orchard, he's just shading. He's trying to prevent a pass or double if the ball does come inside to Sharif Jackson. Now he's forced out to the perimeter. Finkley for three. It's good. Wow. That, that's where you want him to shoot from, supposedly. <laughs> well, he's a 41.5% three-point shooter. He's a better three-point shooter than he is a field goal percentage. And a good steal. Now Finkley puts it in his pocket. Incredible for a big guy. That three was halfway down. Jackson all alone. And as I said, such a huge advantage for Roman in the half court. And it's really starting to take control here in quarter number four. Guys, it's a 12-0 run for Roman Catholic. And you might remember how this run started. It started with a made three by Ty Mishock and then a technical foul that sent Xavier Brown to the line. He hit two foul shots. So 12-0 in total for Roman Catholic after the lead was cut to just three. Yeah, and Devin Prep's going on four minutes without scoring the basketball right now. Maybe getting a little antsy. Over four minutes now. In checks Zane Conlon, out checks Ben Costello. 3.38 to go, fourth quarter. Here's Jason Holloway trying to go to his left. Good defense there by Oliver Bush. As soon as he crosses over into the right, it's a reach, right? That's the scouting report. Make him go back to his right, and once he goes right, you can be aggressive. Speaking of scouting reports, Oliver Bush is going to be called for the foul, but a young man doing his homework he anticipated the spin there by Ty Mishak and beat him to the spot. And Oliver Bush, while an ample scorer, he's on the court and he's a starter for this team for his defensive and his rebounding. Yep. I mean, really, really athletic rebound. Jason Holloway, an unbelievable athlete. We've seen Oliver Bush go up against Holloway and win a lot of those battles. There's Shane Doyle, miss shock for three. Really need it and get it. Timeout. 2.56 to play. Devin yeah. Prep not going away, Bruce. Yeah, they're not going away, and I think it's going to be difficult uh, with the size advantage for Roman for Devin to, you know, try and, you know, full court it. Uh, but they're going to have to, you know, up-tempo it here on the defensive side with some kind of, you know, trap. But uh, I tell you what, Roman has been very effective, like I said, in the half court, regardless of what defense Devin is throwing at him, either they go through it or over it. Will the key here for Devin Prep? I think the idea for Roman Catholic is pretty clear. Space the floor, move the basketball when Devin Prep overcommits, and then you can go to the hoop, but force the Devin Prep defense to do something. Yeah, there's no doubt. And, and running and jumping right here is honestly the only option, and Devin Prep has that in their repertoire. They're kind of known for random run and jumps. Whenever someone turns their back, they usually run and jump. Right here, it's, it's, it's not going to be random. It's going to be you know, quite often. I think as soon as they, they're going to, you know, do a little pressure, I'm not sure if it's going to be, you know, a trapping pressure because you don't want to let up layups. But once the ball gets into the half court, they're going to start running and jumping. Uh, they're going to pick their guy to leave open. It's not going to be Sharif Jackson because he's going to be in the paint. It might be Eric Oliver Bush, um, who's going to be the guy that they're doubling off of. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if that's it. But right now they're, they're pre-doubling and Sharif Jackson all the way open uh, down the court. Great look inside, and Sharif Jackson. Yeah, that one was surprising to me. I don't know why you would leave Sharif Jackson, because you know where he's going to be. He's going to be right by the basket. If you leave a three-point shooter, that's daring him to shoot the ball. <laughs> Sharif Jackson's going to make 100 out of 100 of those layup attempts. Yeah, but again, if you don't stop the ball, Finkley can just take it all the way to the hoop. He doesn't have to stop at the top. No of the doubt. Three. Just the, the way that they set up, it was Sharif Jackson who was yep. open originally. Here's Mishak. For three. Off left and short. And the rebound corralled by Xavier Brown. Numbers oh, again. Gosh. Oliver Bush, he certainly earned that one. Two Devon prep players ran into one another at midcourt, and uh, that's what left the opening there. But Will, for his defensive prowess, I, I think he's earned an uncontested flush. No doubt. I wasn't sure if they were going to try to throw it up for him or just let him take care of the whole, uh, whole shebang, if you will. 
Rebound corralled by Jermai Stewart. Herring fouled just the fourth, uh, fifth, beg your pardon, team foul against Devin Prep. This is an enormously fast game. I mean, not a lot of fouls, not a lot of whistles. 151 to go, Roman Catholic. They're gonna win the basketball game here tonight. Continue their run through the Philadelphia Catholic League, unbeaten. All eyes turn towards South Philadelphia. In just a little bit here, as Newman Garetti will host Roman Catholic, that will be high flying, just like number four, Eric Oliver Bush. It, it's on. You just turn this on, it's already on. And it'll stay here with Roman Catholic. And a little commotion you heard there was Will Ryan heading down. He's going to do a post game interview. And we look forward to see who he takes, Bruce. Yeah. A lot of options. Roman Catholic, it was a team performance start to finish. It really was. Oh, just mishandled that one. But it was. I mean, Roma did such a great job of, of, of I think, team offense tonight. And they actually showed as much or maybe more patience than Devin Prep in the second half on the offensive end. Well, you, you take that lead and you get a couple of baskets in transition. And Devin Prep has to play at a different pace than they want. And Roman Catholic, the reigning 6A state champions, Chris McNesby won the title in his first year back with the program. Had a chance to catch up with him at a golf outing this summer, actually. And, <laughs> you know, listen, some changing personnel. He, I think coaches keep it very close to the vest, Bruce, but... You know, he, he didn't say this was necessarily a team going to be undefeated in Catholic League play this year, but here they are. And it's really no surprise with the talent pool that they have. Yeah, good sportsmanship here by Roman. I mean, they're just, they don't need to score. They're not going to score. Yeah, and that, that's another reflection on Coach McNesby and, you know, this team and how they perform on the coat, but how they perform, you know, as young men. Yeah, you mentioned the... 3.5 GPA and above for all their players. Again, quite impressive. And that's what high school athletics is, is all about, right? Competing in life and in the classroom, on the court, preparing you for the next level of all facets of life. But you had two state champs getting together tonight. It was a three-point game. And then Roman Catholic put the pedal to the metal, played efficient offensively, Devastating defense, I thought. And maybe that's my biggest takeaway, Bruce, is that this is a Roman Catholic team committed to all 94 feet, committed to the defensive end. Devin Prep will not get the shot off. It will not count. And that is the end of the game. Roman Catholic wins by 18. They flex the muscles in the fourth quarter. And they end up winning going away, Bruce. Yeah, you know, and in any sporting event, you know, there's always a turning point in the game. And you touched on it during the broadcast. I felt the turning point of the game was actually that technical foul after the made three by Wishaw. And that really seemed to, like, take the air out of Devin Prep as they pulled within one midway through the third quarter. Will is trying to grab somebody here, and it looks like he's going to get Xavier Brown. Oh. And he's not going to get him. He's not <laughs> going to get him. Oh, oh, no. All right. We'll hang for just a moment here. Yeah, we'll hang for a few moments. They didn't want to get in trouble, so it seems <laughs> oh. they both have the same answer, but they said they'll come right back out as soon as it's Okay. Over. All right. We'll wait for you. Bruce, what else is on your mind, buddy? I'll tell you what. <laughs> it's just an enormous amount of fun uh, coming down, Bob. I really appreciate the invitation of uh, doing Philadelphia Catholic League basketball, whether the, the tournament, the uh, um, 
Memorial Tournament there at uh, Archbishop Wood that we did just a few weeks ago. Now regular season games. I tell you what, covering basketball in the state of Pennsylvania, it really gives me fantastic perspective in, you know, looking at teams, connecting the dots, and but also, you know, showcasing these players that you do. I mean, uh, just the yeoman's effort in publicizing the Philadelphia Catholic League. Uh, everybody knows you for your work with uh, LaSalle College High School, but boy, everywhere we go, hey, Bob Long here doing the game? Absolutely. So uh, great job, great work as well on Philadelphia Catholic League broadcasts, and I'm always honored to be a part of them, my friend. We like standalone nights in the Philadelphia Catholic League. I, I love being on campus at LaSalle and on the road following the Explorers, and we're going to continue to do that. But the way the Catholic League is set up schedule-wise, Bruce, almost always it's every other team playing that sure. night. So yeah. in the rare event where you do get a standalone evening at a school that's willing to have us, we are happy to come out. And what a venue here tonight. My oh. gosh. Uh, here at uh, you know Jefferson University, they treated us very well. Thank you very much for all the hospitality. Um, great broadcast position great amenities associated with the broadcast position and um we really appreciate that for the guys that uh you know cover high school sports having uh, a little bit of room to broadcast and uh you know easy access to facilities mm -hmm. uh, that you need during a game i think that that you know what schools you know need to understand is with you know a few amenities here and there it really helps not only get more broadcasters you know into those venues but then it helps promote those teams and it really helps the broadcast as well doesn't hurt that it's a college venue right no, i mean the correct. amenities and things that come into this and the herb mcgee you know an infested sort sure. of gym sure. here right i mean this kind of oozes the funding that comes from having a basketball program that's had this much success and a smith National Basketball Hall of Famer Herb McGee, inducted, by the way, 12 years ago at this point. It's crazy how time flies. Yeah, our buddy Will down there, he's... Uh... <laughs> he's waiting it out. I, I, I don't know. These post-game team meetings last a long time, and then sometimes the guys slip right out the back door. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, you know, that. Uh, look, uh, Coach McNesby, I tell you what, uh, I oh. don't think that the team meeting should last all that long <laughs> here tonight because I think that, you know, clearly, yeah, they it took them a little while to get their feet underneath them. Um, but, boy, once they really got things rolling in the second half, they were kind of that unstoppable force um, that the rest of the Philadelphia Catholic League and uh, the PIAA are going to have to contend with. I mean, yeah. they are just... Uh, they're just a machine. Yep. It's a tough year to be a 6A basketball team. And there are, you know, there, there are a lot of good 6A basketball teams that, you know, we've seen Absolutely this right. year. I mean. Oh, it's, it's not a sure thing, of course. But. Um, not forgetting, uh, you know, about our friends up in Reading there. They That's put right. on a show at uh, the Moscow uh, Invitational. Um, they're always going to be. You know, in there, Coach Rick Perez uh, just always does a tremendous job. But Devin Prep, they really have their work cut out for them now. You know, we talked about in the opening part of the broadcast that this is kind of the fork in the road for their season. If they could somehow pull the upset, amazing how much easier the road to get to the postseason is for them versus now having to struggle from the bottom up, you know, just to get into the postseason and uh that's what this game was so pivotal for devon prep i don't think that it really was obviously that pivotal for a roman catholic but definitely devon prep um they really have their work cut out for them down the stretch they're okay though i mean listen they're almost certainly now in a spot well a lot would have to go right to get into that one through six where you get essentially a buy you don't have to go to the playing game but they are still palestra good the challenge when you're 7 through 10, not only is that extra game, but that very likely your quarterfinal matchup 
the game to get to the Palestrum will be against either a Roman Catholic mm -hmm. or Newman Garetti. Yeah. And, and that's the challenge, yep. right? Uh, this team is good enough, Devon Prep, to get to the Palestra. They can work their style and play positionless basketball and space you to death. It's just difficult to do that, I mean, against Roman Catholic and Newman Garetti. And those three teams that I just mentioned are reigning state champs here in Pennsylvania. The Catholic League produced three state champs. And they don't have any 1A teams. <laughs> I don't <laughs> yeah. even know if they have any 2A teams. No, I don't think they do. I think, so I think the they bottom. Won, they won three of three. four. Mm -hmm. That's correct. I think they go down to 3A. But um, still, it, it's going to be one that, you know, all of the, um, the uh, trials and tribulations of playing a Philadelphia Catholic League schedule is so important, uh, you know. I'm, I'm laughing at my man Brady here who put Will dead center on the camera. <laughs> While we're talking, oh my. Yeah. It could he, he, he was standing there in good posture wait, waiting for the interview. Yeah, we didn't, uh, we didn't get the broadcast position camera up because we figured Will was going to like, uh, like uh, you know, tie somebody down to be able to get what do you, you think? Know, an two, interview. Two minute warning here? I think two minute warning. Two here, minute yeah. warning. That we want the fans to keep hanging with us here. That's right. And, uh, Two minute warning. All right. There I think he's go. just got to go in there and assert himself. That's right. That's right. You know, that, that, uh, that's listen, good, good for the, I mean, good for the kids, right? They're trying to do the right thing after the game. The unfortunate thing is we did clear it with uh, Chris McNesby. Yeah. They, they wouldn't have gotten in trouble. <laughs> that's right. They wouldn't have gotten in trouble. That's great. But, uh, no, nah, I just, uh, Sometimes that's the most difficult uh, thing, you know, 100%. post game there is to, uh, you know, everybody, all these teams have their traditions. All these teams have, yep. you know, are, are, are so structured as to what happens pregame as well as postgame as well as halftime that, you know, I think that that's only a testament again to Coach Nes McNesby and, you know, his imprint on this team mm -hmm. and uh, in every aspect of how these guys perform and every aspect of, uh, you know, the logistics of uh, going to and from and during, you know, a basketball game. Tell you what, we got a loyal bunch hanging on there. Wow, good. But uh, what do you think? Yeah, it's... Uh I think that they've they've definitely uh, it's been a yeoman's effort by these people listening to both of us kind of drown uh, stammer on for uh, you know how many ever minutes it's been. But well, maybe here's what we'll do: we're going to head off the air. Stay tuned to our Twitter page. If somebody comes out in the next few minutes, we'll record it and we'll make sure we post it. How's that sound? That sounds uh, sounds pretty good. All right. Well, I want to thank Brady Joyce. Did a great job today on camera. Thank you for everything. Bruce Badgley, my buddy coming in from Reading area, Berks County. Appreciate all you do. Great to have you here for standalone night in the Catholic League. Will Ryan, who will hang down there and see if we can't get an interview. Uh, <laughs> Take him out the dry. <laughs> yeah, that's right. For everybody here at Bob Long Sports, Bob Long saying so long. Roman Catholic flexes the muscles in the Philadelphia Catholic League. A winner, 48-30, to 30, over another reigning state champ, Devin Prep. Stay tuned. Tomorrow evening, Bob Long Sports will hit the road to Father Judge in a huge game. Win or really go home in many ways for the Explorers. Their last shot to get some head-to-head -head tie breaks in their favor and to, to try to climb into that 9 or 10 spot in the league. So tune in for that on Saturday, or beg your pardon, Sunday, LaSalle's game against St. Joe's Prep. Senior day moved up to 1230 for the Eagles game. So tune in for that as well as a little appetizer. Thanks, everybody, and good night.